Hello, everybody. So today I am going to get into the geography of East Asia, paying particular attention to China, Japan, and Korea. Uh, so China I kind of divide up into a different, a uh, few different parts. So Eastern China, uh, this is the coastal China. The upper sections of it are cool and dry. Uh, lots of hot summers. The southern area uh, is more tropical, so lots of rain and jungle type climate. Um, rivers are crucial but very dangerous. Uh, the Yangtze and the Huanghe, or the Yellow River. Um, <clears throat> however, these rivers are huge sources of electricity and farming with dams almost everywhere. Eastern China is pretty much where all of the people live in the world's most populous country. Um, one of the interesting things, and I bring it up in geography because it's absolutely incredible, is the Grand Canal. Um, in eastern China, uh, roads were kind of tough to come by, but as you can see on the map on the right, there are tons and tons of rivers, and you can see all those different cities that are on the rivers. And so, a um, little bit in the 5th century BCE, but is really finished by the Sui Dynasty, um, they create a canal that goes from Beijing down to Hangzhou that is 1,103 miles long and even has little offshoots. It's basically a road. Um, in some places, it's elevated up to 138 feet. Um, in modern day, it's been updated and improved, but understand that they finished that in the 500, so 1,500 years ago. That means they built a canal that was 1,100 miles long, connecting multiple rivers, elevating to as much as 138 feet above sea level with shovels. Shovels. It's ridiculous. And you also have like little uh, groups that live on the canal and all the trade and transport. And it really was the backbone for much of China throughout its history and even today. And when you look at pictures of the canal, you can see all these little, you see these little houseboats I was talking about on the right here, and you see it's got little offshoots. I mean, it looks like a river, but little do you know that it's actually a man-made canal. One of the most incredible feats of engineering in human history, in my opinion. Um, now, China also is the home of tea. Here's a tea farm. Absolutely beautiful terraced farming. Um, uh, this is more in the southern region of China where they get a lot more rain. Um, but just really, really just absolutely beautiful. Um, and one of the most famous areas because of all the reflections of the sunlight, uh, the Yuanyang Rice Terraces. Uh, I believe this is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Of course, in when rice, right before it's getting ready to be picked, you have to flood the field. So these are these terraced rice fields that with the different type of rices and um, algae and all sorts of stuff like that, you get all these different colors. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. And then when you look at it like sunset, I mean, just gorgeous. Farming can be gorgeous too, gang. I mean, my obligatory picture of a panda because, you know, it's China. It's painted. Um, also, we talked about the Gobi Desert, and this is a really interesting little, um, I believe it's a Buddhist monastery out there uh, in Crescent Lake in the Gobi Desert. They do make a little bit of money. You see all these tire tracks here. You can take a tour out there. Okay, really wonderful. Um, we have the Grand Canyon. China has the Zhang Jiaji, I think, Zhang Jiaji. Um, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong tomorrow. Um, so this is kind of in their jungle region. These are huge limestone cliffs that have been slowly but surely eroded by rain and water over time. And then you have the mist there. Just really, really gorgeous area to go see. I mentioned all those rivers. Uh, Three Gorges Dam. Uh, it's a dam that's 1.4 miles across. Uh, creates a tremendous amount of electricity. And this is something that you use to take advantage of geography. Um, China has some incredible rivers and some great ability to harness the power of those rivers. And that's exactly what the Three Gorges Dam does. 
Now, moving on uh, to Korea and Japan. So Korea, we have a peninsula with uh, similar weather to ours, lots of mountains, uh, but some areas are fairly fertile. It's also a very urban area that we'll be talking about later this year. Uh, Japan, also lots of a series of islands, very, very mountainous as well, lots of fishing off the coast, very, very fertile coasts as well. And they basically, if it's in the ocean, they're going to eat it. So here are some pictures of Korea. And again, Korea, very like very similar to like Pacific Northwest kind of weather, like think Washington, okay, and Oregon. You have mountains, you have lakes, as you can see here, really, really beautiful. Uh, there's a really cool, you know, the, lots of train travel in this area. And uh, this is a wonderful picture. I'm going to talk more about um, cherry blossoms in a minute, but this is the Kyonghwa Station. Um, in Jinhai in Korea. So just this absolutely gorgeous uh, train station that you goes through right around this time of the year, going through all the, the beautiful cherry trees, which are uh, you know common in this area. Uh, they also have something really cool, uh, the Yulung Seaside Road, kind of like the Pacific Coast Highway. And as you can see, going over these, like you can drive, obviously here's some steps. So there's areas where you can like sit and observe and take pictures. And then you can drive across it as well. So really, really cool uh, place I think that you, you, you guys would like to see. As we move in Japan, variety of different uh, animals from our little uh, snow ferret up here and some crazy fish that, I don't know, it scares me. It's like a dinosaur. Um, little snow leopard as well as monkeys chilling in hot springs. Japan is a series of volcanic islands, and so they do have hot springs. Uh, this is actually a big tour uh, opportunity. I believe these are macaques. I believe that is the type of primate that I'm talking about here. Um, and you can get to a certain degree. You have to stay pretty far back, and everything's kind of behind glass and stuff like that. Uh, humans are, this area is off limit to humans, but uh, they understand when it's cold in the wintertime. You need to warm up in a hot spring, and boom, here you go. Also, Japan is known for its uh, famous salamanders. Yes, that is a giant Japanese salamander that actually uh, is blind. And if you see all these nodes, these bumps on it, it can actually feel subtle changes in the pressure of water around it, which allows it to hunt fish. And in this area, the salamanders grew so big because nothing else hunted them. So they got bigger and bigger. And so, yeah, you get these uh, salamanders that can actually be some of the largest ones, six feet in length. I'm also going to have you watch a separate video on cherry blossoms because it is undoubtedly one of the biggest symbols of Japan. Yes, there's the rising sun and stuff like that, but the cherry blossom is huge. There's cherry blossom festivals, and basically the time when the cherry blossoms bloom really just for about a week or two, uh, typically in March or April. In many ways, the nation, which is one of the most modern nations you'll see and full of, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing a video on the urbanization of Japan, but to take time to appreciate this kind of fleeting beauty of nature is really, really wonderful. And like I said, I'm going to have a separate video for you guys to watch on it, but it's just, just gorgeous. Um, I love cherry trees and, and I love that time of year. Of course, all the cherry trees that you see in the United States of America are actually a gift from the Japanese government to the United States of America. So if you go down to Washington, D.C., hopefully next year we can go check them out. Um, all those cherry trees blooming. Uh, it's quite an amazing site, and I really do uh, suggest you all to see it. Uh, most famous mountain, Mount Fuji, very important also as part of the uh, Shinto religion, also volcanic, but as you can see, big majestic mountain there. And the big thing about Japan, there really is this, this huge appreciation of gardening and nature even though they're a very urban society i mean many homes will have little bonsai trees or something like that and gardening in japan is like an art 
Uh, there's a pretty famous Japanese garden out in San Francisco. If you guys are ever that way, you can go check that out. I would highly suggest it. But you can see it's a little bit of everything. They have, you know, stone and water, and in the water are probably like koi fish. You guys know what koi fish are, basically steroided up goldfish. And we have, you know, our cherry trees and all these different other types of trees. Um, Japanese maple. I actually have a Japanese maple in my house because it's awesome and beautiful and one of the most favorite things on my property. So, um, okay, there's our quick entry to uh, East Asia. We're going to zip over to India next, and then we'll also talk about some other types of things in Asian geography. So I hope you guys enjoy this one, and I will see you soon.